Okay, so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to make a, a Google slider to insert a Google slider into your website like the one that you see here. This is a, a, a gadget that I use that, uh, that is designed by Romain Vilard that I uh, use in my Google Classroom and I just think it looks really nice on my home page and it's not that much harder it's slightly more difficult than inserting a normal Google presentation but it looks so much better so uh, I'm gonna walk you through that and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this particular slideshow and we're gonna insert it onto this demo website that I have right here uh, under home so we'll put that uh, basically in the same spot that I've got it here so the first step is to go to Stiegel.com and I am putting this on my virtual classroom website so I'm gonna have a link to this but uh, if you go to Google and you look up Stiegel.com you can find this and then if you were to type in animated slider it's gonna get you to this page so uh, what this is these are very good and detailed instructions on how to uh, create one of these uh, presentations. There's two steps to this. You create the presentation and then you use a URL from that presentation to put it inside this custom gadget that's built into Google Sites. And so uh, you follow those instructions. The first step is we're going to actually go down to the bottom here. So here are the instructions. We go down to the bottom and we're going to pick one of these templates to use. And there's three different kinds. So the one I have, the one I like best, is this basic Chevron image, or image Chevron. This is just a, a plain old rectangle. And then this next one, you've got this animation with uh, text. So, and then the last one, you've got this rounded corners one. And they're going to end up looking with this aspect ratio. So you can't change that. So you've got to pick. I like the rounded corners. I wish they had the rounded corners on this rectangular one but uh, anyway the one that I pick is the rectangle but you can use any of these and the way to use this is you can either click on use this template or you click right here and it takes you up now if you were to click use this template what it does I'll go ahead and click it I guess By doing this, you automatically create a, a copy of this that goes into your Google Drive. See my name up here? So I've got that. And uh, what you want to do is rename that. What I did is I took it up here and I renamed it Slider Demo for our purposes because we're probably going to go back to the Stiegel thing. I'm going to go back a couple. Okay, so we're back up to Stiegel. And again, you just click on one of the links there. So there we are, and uh, here we are again. Now, um, when you look at this template, what it does is it shows you that where the picture is, that's what you're going to see. And so what you want to do when you take your pictures, you can either crop them down. You don't really have to. You just need to remember when you insert pictures here that what you see where the picture is, that's what you're gonna see on your screen not not what's below and you can always go in and move pictures up and down if you're not happy with the way they look in in your website and so what I did here is I went and got a picture of Alexander the Great and then I didn't even crop it although for the one I made on my my website I did I just inserted it here and if you look over there uh, you can see that it's actually bigger than the picture they show and I know that it's it's gonna be you know I know where that picture is if I move it I can see that and I wanna make sure his face is shown on the website so I'm gonna I'm gonna move this up a little I don't care about that bottom part I just want his face and the face of his horse to show up that's probably pretty good placement if I didn't you know if I wanna make this a little bit better I could I could crop the images and that's what I did on uh, on the one that I actually made is I cropped the images and even then I always set this up. I'll, I'll scroll up so you can see. I always set this up just a little bit bigger than what I need. I, I make it a, a small bit bigger. I also go in and I kill the original pictures that are on there. I just leave it white space. You can kill them or leave the originals. Um, one of the tricks that I do when I do this is you'll notice when you get to the bottom, you know, they only give you about three or four slides. If you click enter, you don't have that template again. So rather than click enter to create the new slides, I'll do a control C to copy 
and then I'll do a control V and that gives me an extra slide and when I start getting towards the bottom I always make sure I save one to copy to move to the next one so I've got that picture so I can see so that's that's just a little trick I use when you're all done putting all your images in I've got 11 images in this one of the things that you're going to want you've got to do two things with the presentation before you're ready to move it into uh, into your Google site um, the first thing is you want to kind of play around with your animations and to do that you click slide and then you go to change transition not super intuitive there uh, I guess I'm maybe if I'm calling animations that's probably what they call it on PowerPoint on this one it's slide change and what you've got is you've got the choice of several transitions you know slide from right from left I per personally like fade but whatever whatever floats your boat there you click that you've got the choice between slow medium and fast and then notice you've got this apply to all slides so you've got that and you can preview these by clicking play and, and so you want to kind of play around until it looks the way you want it to look when you're done with that the next thing that you do is a little counterintuitive normally when you want to share a presentation through Google Drive you're gonna to go to the share thing and then you're gonna mess with that from private to whatever looks like I've shared this to anyone who has a link on this one it's a little different we're gonna to go to file publish to the web and notice, notice how this is yours is gonna look a little different if you've never done this before it's gonna be slightly different from this and anyway you're gonna choose this now a couple things you can you can change the transition so this is set to every three seconds that's the default but you can you can change it to whatever you definitely want to click this start and restart and then this don't worry about the embed code that's if you you would need that if you were going to embed this on some other website like WordPress or something if you're using Google sites don't worry about that we've got a gadget that will do that what you do want to do though is you want to copy the document link when you're done you can close this or leave it open it's not super important which one you do so with that I'll go ahead and close it so now I'm gonna to go to the page where I want to put it we're 80 percent home here now I go to edit and the cursor is exactly where I want it so I go to insert now normally when I'm gonna insert a presentation then I'm gonna go to drive and then presentation I don't do that here because this is a gadget it, it's hiding parts of the presentation so I click more gadgets and it's right here the slideshow maker you click it even though that's got a different picture than the one I used that's okay I click select now I'm gonna enter the URL and I personally like these at 280 pixels and it works so I know because I used it on my other one you have to unclick any of these because you don't want any of that now this part screwed me up for a good long time so don't skip this step see the green save button kinda doesn't you know everything in Google you don't really save right so I I kinda forgot about this gotta click that green save once you're done clicking the green save you click OK you do save okay couple things I wanna show you on this because this can screw you up here it is so it looks just the way it's supposed to okay now you probably didn't even pay attention to this because I didn't bring any attention to it but uh, this is one thing that's nice too normally when you embed a presentation if you go to edit it it kills it it doesn't work anymore you can you can edit this all you want it doesn't I'm gonna switch this to black I think the default page background color is white but I'm just gonna show you black and uh, y you know when you put this in you have a slight border and so you kinda have to worry about that so if I do black hey I don't even see my border okay well if I put the picture too low or too high you'd see the border so um, it, it just so you can uh, uh, sometimes that border will show I wanna show you how to adjust that to your to your pages actual color so we're gonna go to my website this is one thing that screwed me up I tried a white and a black border and since my website my my classroom website was neither I uh, I kept seeing that border and, and I didn't see it on every picture but I saw it on some and that's you can try to play around with that by adjusting your pictures on your your thing but there's also an easy way to do this um, 
I want to make the border the same exact color as my website, which this one is. But in case that nasty little border shows up, and I was hoping it would show up on that other one, but it didn't, um, what you want to do is you want it to, to figure out what exact, you, you're going to need your color number. And to figure out what color number you're using, see my background is kind of a light gray, you go to Manage Site, my favorite place, themes, colors, and fonts. Now, that particular place that I put it in is my content area, so I'll make sure to click content. Then I click on the background. Now, see how it's got content is, is red, background is red, so good, I'm on background. Go to color, and I've got this. Now, what is important is down here, I have my color number. So I can, I'm pretty sure you can find color numbers and enter them in there and maybe give custom colors. Not sure. Maybe d ignore that. Maybe you can. So anyway, I don't need to save anything because, but what I did do is I copied the color number here. So now I'll click cancel. Go back here to my home page. Go to my slideshow maker. And I want you to notice that there is my color number. So I'm going to paste it back in. If I change that, you, you, we run the risk of seeing that. Once again, I click Save. Make sure we're good. Click OK. Save again. I am set up. So if you end up seeing a slight border, because sometimes that will happen, one of the things that I've learned over the years is I, I just, nowadays when I build websites, I have a tendency to, to use a white background because it just makes things slightly easier. But, you know, it, it's important to have a website you like the look of. So you don't necessarily have to do that. But if you do end up seeing that border, don't forget that you, that you need to go back in and change that background color to be an exact match of whatever your content area is, and you should be good. Um, this is a nice, you know, it's, this is not that much harder than, I, I think if you, if you created one of these from scratch, if you did this from brand new from scratch and you were fairly proficient at this, it's going to take you 20 minutes or so. This is a really nice uh, use of 20 minutes of your time to put something like this on here. It makes your website look so much better. So uh, don't let the, uh, the instructions intimidate you. Don't, don't, this is actually fairly easy. You know, and if you need to pause the, the video and, and do it as I'm speaking, it's, it's a piece of cake to do these. So uh, anyway, I hope that this uh, has helped you. And I've also got the written out instructions on my website. So uh, if, if the video is not enough, you can always check that out too. Take care.